Wheels are turning. Wheels are turning. There's the little pop out that tells us Hangouts is going away. That means we're live. We're live. Hour number seven. It I'm, is 4 p.m. Central Time. I am cutting Gouda cheese, baby. Who Smoke? cut the cheese? You know Gouda. who cut the cheese? Grandma. I Grandma cut the cheese. Cut the cheese Grandma like nobody. cut the cheese. Well, we're going to give you a little bit of Gouda. Good. That's how you keep yourself flowing. Hydrate and eat. That's right. Hour number seven, joining us from Canada, Jeremy, also known as Sipper Social Sippers Social Club, uh, big on YouTube, blew up within the last year. Blew up. Uh, courtesy of at least one video. He's got a lot out there, but one, Johnny Walker in particular. Uh, and when I asked him, I thought maybe he'd want to take a look at Johnny Walker's today, but he suggested Ardbeg Committee releases. Can't fault him for that. Jeremy, come in and uh, introduce yourself. Hey, what's up, guys? We're uh, pretty honored and uh, privileged to be a part of this uh, 12 Hours of Boom. So thank you so much for having me on. We're really looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you for coming on. So uh, we just had our second water spillage. Actually, well, in the first uh, whiskey tuber of the day, sure. uh, Jason Mash and Drum will be tuning in later or joining us later. This is a this is a perfect time to come on. I feel like you guys are hitting your stride. You're just after the halfway point. You know, I bet you're feeling pretty nice over there. And we're going to our bag, so uh, can't go wrong with that. Well, that's what I told Bart when we started with the dickle. I said our bag is coming up later. Right. You'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So we're starting with uh, what the drum? You guys pour the drum out, yeah? Sounds good to me. Yep. Let's do it. We got the drum. The Grooves and Dark Cove. But Bart does not want to. Yeah, Dark Cove. He finished off open. one. The Dark Cove will be open when I retire, I believe. What would you say, Grooves or Drum? He said Drum. Drum. I was going to say. Bart was I, had, I had a Grooves and uh, I had a bunch of samples and I kind of drank that, reviewed that, and then I ended up getting, I traded my, uh, my Grooves just because I wasn't feeling like it was something I want to kind of wanted to stick with, you know, I, I, I felt like I just wanted to trade it and get rid of it. Uh, all these art bag committee releases to me, I mean, the last two anyway, um, I have been a little disappointed, I would say overall, just with uh, how much money they are, especially here up in Canada. I got to buy them in the States because we don't get them uh, in Ontario. Out West, you can see them here and there, but I mean, they cost me a lot of money bringing them up. So for the money and for what you're getting, um, the grooves, the the um, the drum, slightly, slightly disappointed. What do you guys think? So, do you like the? I mean, where are you at with the regular Ardbeg Ten? Ardbeg Ten is a great whiskey. Um, I think I scored that 88 out of 100, and all these new committee releases, except for the for the Dark Cove, have been below that grade. So. Mm -hmm. You know, double the money for not as much enjoyment, in my opinion. Yeah, they are more expensive. Dark Cove um, has, is one I, I like Supernova a little bit better, but I came late to the party, and all I got was a sample of that, and it was gone. Um, and then I uh, love Dark Cove, and I'm still enjoying these different expressions, but they are expensive. What gets me is... If you don't get them, they're gone. So now yeah. I'll tell you, not as a peat head. Mm -hmm. um, I've bought well the drum and the and grooves and dark cove. Now dark dark cove set the tone for me of for Ardbeg committee releases. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. it's still my favorite. I was not disappointed by the drum or grooves either one, but you know I don't I I, I try not to compare them to other you know, releases. I try not to say, well, yeah, this was 120. I can get our big 10 for 55. Mm. Why would I, mm. I can get two of those. I try not to do that. I try to look at it. The whiskey, you know, in what whiskey is in this bottle is 120. Am I disappointed? Do I like it? Would I buy it again? Right. So, I mean, I would say I have not been disappointed. Right. I will agree with that. And I love, I kind of like how they've I give them a lot of kudos for branching out and being playful with the whiskey rather than coveting and holding on and being traditional. So that's the part I do like is that they're able to jump out and do these weird little dances. Hold on. 
little cowbell for Swami, Malted in Montreal. Uh, so he says, Zima's on me. Zima is on me. You got it, Swami. <laughs> What's up, Swami? How's it going, bud? But, um, you know, at the same time, I'm not a. Uh, I think some people that are, hard, spoke that a are different hard, language there, hardcore, hard big fans, mm. you know, they get expectations up, they expect different things, um, they have more experience with it. I'm not necessarily a hardcore art big fan. I'm not even a hardcore Pete fan. Hmm. So, right. I mean, yeah. when I taste it, I look up, it's good. Yeah. I like it. But I can see where some hardcore art big fans are going to be disappointed in them because they don't necessarily deliver that Pete punch. There's that, those different sweetnesses, the rum finish, you know, stuff like that that's coming in there and playing a factor. So for me, I like their core range for that. I like the Ardbeg 10 straight up. A lot of times when I want that peat, that ashtray, those leather notes, I'm reaching for the standard 10. So I kind of know when I want that, that I'm going there. And then I love messing around with the Corey Vreckin and the Uido. So I think for me, their range does the things that I that I expect, that I, that I, I look for. Um, and then again, I'll just reiterate these. I feel more like um, it's kind of like they're playing around and, and hopefully drawing some more people to the Pete side. So that's that's my idea or where I come from on it. Yeah, like for me, uh, I agree with you. Like the core range of stuff is great. The Koi of Reckon is definitely my favorite. Uh, I love that whiskey. For the drum... I feel like this whiskey tastes and nose is a little youthful to me. I feel like it just has a little bit too much bite to it. Um, but you can tell, like, if this thing was aged, you know, a couple more years, whatever it may be, you might have a great whiskey here. Because you do can pick out a couple elements in here that are really nice. That fruit note's really good. I mean, of course, the peat and everything that comes with it. It just seems like I get a little bit of that almost uh, chemical turpentine kind of note to it and it kind of just just turns me off to it just a little bit in, in regards to that mm. i'm getting more tropical notes and almost the rum finish than i did originally with this and, and this one's been this one's three quarters of the way gone um that rum finish is definitely developing on it it was a little tight at first and i couldn't yeah these these are tight for sure like when i first opened mine it was very tight it's a little better now yeah. Um, but it's like all, all art bags are like that almost when you open them, they're tight. You know, you got to give them time to breathe. Mm. Oh, he snuck in. Mm. Cousin Shane's in the house. Hi, Debbie! <laughs> <laughs> the dog was the first alert. The dog smelled him. I was already in. Oh. <laughs> all right. So, first sip on the drum, and we are looking at 51.6%. Uh, which really isn't that much higher than the standard the release. Drums. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 52%. I even looked at it. Yeah. You were good. Those are, those are both. They're just so close. Mm. Uh, George Kaplan in the chat just saying that uh, he almost gets a tequila note on the drum when he first opened it. I definitely got that. I did get that tequila Ooh. note on the drum for sure. Yeah. I can see that in there. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, I got I got Pete with the, at first Pete and citrus. Yeah, I couldn't tell you it was rum. I didn't. I, I never got a tequila note, anything like On that. On the nose, I definitely get a tequila note. The agave, now, yeah, yeah, agave, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's a good call, G Cat. Hmm. And then this always just ran. I get the Ardbeg notes with the sweet kicker. As soon as Ebhead said lime, lime bonanza. Okay. Lime bonanza. You know it? Tequila with a lime shooter. Mm -hmm. Just got yeah. it. Just mm -hmm. got it. <laughs> and like even the saltiness comes through there too, right? Huh. It does. Yeah. Okay. Go Ebhead. Yeah. He's staying up late. He's been training himself. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, it's just like uh, I think it's eleven o'clock there for him. Yeah, he was he up said till he's, he's staying up till late last night. I he was think. in our live last night yeah. training. He said he said he's training. He's prepping. I've worn that uh, pillow that he's got there on his head. I've worn it. Do you have that photo? Um, I think you've got no, I didn't even too. have those. Roy had those. Oh. I didn't get any of those. Got it. 
Uh, Whiskey Throttle, Daniel saying disappointed by the product when the marketing outperforms it. You know, I, I honestly, I tried marketing. Hmm. I, I, I don't. I mean, I hate to say it doesn't influence me. I, I really, I try to say what's in what's in the bottle. What's what's the whiskey? What's the juice? So, I don't um, care if it's a naked guy with wings falling off of a tail <laughs> you know, telling me to enjoy it. That doesn't mean anything. That's called that's called Bart and the Angel. <laughs> It's it's close to Tobias, uh, but it's like his third cousin. <laughs> well, I think what Daniel was maybe like alluding to is you know the whole Art Bag Day and the whole like uh, festivals they put on regarding that. We had one here in Toronto, which I attended. Um, they kind of go all out pushing these new yearly releases, and I think I said this in my review. It's just like, is it too much pressure for a distillery like Art Bag or even um, Lafroy to come out with these yearly releases? Is there too much pressure from the marketing team to be like, all right, what are we going with this year? Okay, we're doing drums, so, you know, Carabana style, um, that kind of thing. And they run with that. And I think it does just maybe take away a little bit from the whiskey. Um, like I said, this this tastes and the nose is a little youthful to me. I'd maybe be more okay with them coming out with the whiskey every other year if they have to and make sure they get this stuff to where their price point is matched with quality, I think. is is That's kind of the whole marketing influence into into our bag and our bag day so yeah. i picture this has been planned out like 10 years ago they met we're like we're going to start doing this start laying down your stock for what you want to do um but i don't know i don't know that but, you know i can i can i can see that though and i think so maybe maybe sometimes they are a little rushed maybe sometimes they don't know what to do uh you know and so the marketing and that stuff does kick in and we're rolling with this idea, come up with a whiskey to match it. I'm not See, saying that's what I, I would say it's bank, planned but, out way further than that. Just um, to know, hey, we're going to need rum barrels, how many, how long are we going to age, what's kind of finish, what are we pulling from? But I don't know. We didn't get into asking them that. I do know uh, just from talking to Jackie on how they then run the show there is they get themed up on everything they're going to be doing. And, um, you know, so they're definitely matching it at their visitor center and and tying it all in. But you lead to a good point. So the question I think would be if we're going to be looking at a marketing standpoint, does this range, does this annual release of something different draw more people to the Pete side? Does it draw it into Ardbeg specifically? Um I would guess, I would actually say it, not even a guess, it definitely does. And then what I would say, I would say doing what they're doing, they're guaranteed to miss here and there. But I would say as much as they're guaranteed to miss, they're also guaranteed to hit here and there. Sure. And, and I think, what are you pointing for? What do you want? Grab another glass because I just, I remember a lot of people have said, how does this compare to the grooves? Probably grooms? reach around to your right. And let's just do, let's pour right a little grooves right. and just look at them both while we're here. So, um, so I would guess, yeah, there, I got one. I got one. Let's okay. see it. So I would oh, guess no. that's exactly, so you want to just pour the grooves in here and we'll share it? Yeah. 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 So I would, I, I would, here's the other thing. This is totally selfish. Um, by them doing this, I love when we're able to get them. It's an auto buy for me. And then we're able to come out with what we like, what we don't like in regards to the release. If they just had the core range, you know, I would probably still convince him to, hey, let's go back and redo the core range one more time. <laughs> Yeah, I think what you, your point there is is valid um, as far as Ardbeg reaching out to new potential Scotch customers by doing like a rum finish, right? Because automatically anyone who drinks rum might be interested in this Scotch now. And uh, I think that in respect is, uh, is definitely a valid point. Um, and yeah, as far as them doing releases with rum, obviously rum casts, um, you see that trend a little more, it seems nowadays. Yeah. Um, probably just like the casts, you know, easier to acquire, a little bit cheaper perhaps. Um, but there's some good rum casts out there. There's a lot of that are just okay. But yeah, definitely that trend seems like it's picking up a little more steam uh, nowadays. Hello? 
Hello, answer that phone. Mm. <laughs> They're both, uh, Grooves and, and Drum are both real similar to me. I don't know if Blind, I'd be able to pick them out. Maybe the Grooves has a little bit more peat to it. Maybe there's a little bit more, not even sweetness. I think the drum is sweeter from the rum. I don't, I don't know. know. They're, they're I got to tell similar. you, getting this deep into our run here, I'm starting to feel the palate kind of, and I just had a watermelon. I'm not sure that was a good move. <laughs> I had a nice juicy watermelon slice. <laughs> Right before we moved into this segment, that may have been an error on my part. Well, it could have been the six drinks of Iron Root. That you had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Robert's right here, and I'm saying Iron Root is, is standing up and firing shots. <laughs> you can't taste anything else after you've had a good Iron Root. That's why I moved to earlier in the day. <laughs> That's right. He established his presence early. <laughs> I think um, you know with the, with the phage and the release over there now. How many how many bottles does the distillery sell during that day? Their day. Each distillery has their day. Oh, they line up. But I mean, are they selling maybe fifteen hundred that day bottles, and then they're releasing the rest gets released as the committee released to the public. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And then they didn't didn't they do the one that was like a real rare rare bottle. I can't even remember. Somebody's telling me about it. I can't remember the name. So now, it's weird with the committee release because I thought committee release, I mean, when they first started it, was it not just for committee members? Like you had to sign up through there or whatever, and then you would get bottles kind of like SMWS does. But now it seems like committee releases, they're available at every store in the United States, more or less, and some in Canada as well. Yeah, they do. I mean, they do show up. Literally, though, the drum was the first time we saw a committee release here in Wichita. Okay, um, two two bottles at our at our store. They got showed a lot up. more. Uh, that's the first time we've seen committee releases here. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe somebody that's watching Ardbaggy, if he's still watching, he might know how many uh, bottles generally of committee release are released. You know, retail. And I do get the emails. I'm a committee member, and they tell me, "Boom, it's." This much. Okay. Yeah. Do you have uh, Do you have both there with you, the drum and the grooves, Jeremy? Have you looked at them side by side? You know, I haven't. Um, I had a grooves. Uh, I ended up trading it. I traded it away just because um, I got a decent offer for something else. I totally forget what I got now, but someone was looking for it, and um, it wasn't a whiskey that I was super excited about. So, yeah, I traded that one away. I did a review on it, that versus the regular release. Um, <clears throat> decent whiskey, but again, I would take, you know, I think their core range stuff is still is still better than that than that Grooves was. It's the way the law is in the U.S. can't be sold here that way. I miss that. Mm -hmm. Now you start, let's uh, back up just a little bit. You had come on, you know, you've been on a few shows with Rob, Whiskey in the Six. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, kind of went off. You you uh, created your own channel. Is that because you're better looking than Rob is? <laughs> yeah, people were tired of looking at his face, so they you know he wanted some variety out there. So he convinced me to make a channel. Yeah. Um, well, no, I like before before all that. Um, I reviewed whiskey for Toronto Whiskey Society just on their blog. Um, I would do reviews. Um, did that for about a year or so. Um, always kind of had the idea to do a YouTube channel. I'd watched YouTube videos. Like, I mean, I watched you guys back in your very first stuff when you were upstairs in the kitchen. Um, same with everyone else. So I've been watching whiskey reviews for a long time. Got a little bit of background in television. I work in television. Um, so I can turn on a video camera, <laughs> but yeah, it kind of just escalated and yeah, it, it turned out. Pretty well. I'm having a lot of fun with it, uh, doing reviews. I kind of like having the catalog of videos that I can kind of look back on if I want to ever see, okay, what do I think about this whiskey? You know, I can just scroll through and find out exactly what I thought about it at that time. Kind of like that aspect of it. Um, and of course, that Johnny Walker video that I did uh, went crazy. I had that idea a long time ago, and I pitched it to Rob, actually, Whiskey in the Six. I'm like, we should, we should do the entire Johnny Walker core range in one video. I don't think anyone's ever done that. And we kind of hemmed and hawed about it. We didn't have all the bottles at the time. And kind of just 
got washed under the rug. And then, you know, I finally did it. And uh, it turns out that a lot of people, obviously Johnny Walker, huge global brand. So a lot of, a lot of views on that video for sure. Yeah. I think it's up to almost, uh, it's over 800,000 now. Nice. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Very cool. What was the hardest one for you to get a hold of when you were trying to get them all together for the sh your show? None of them were that hard to get a hold of. I mean, they're all readily available. Uh, the Johnny Walker Blue, I actually purchased in a UK auction because it was super cheap. I think I got it for, it was like 65 or 70 pounds. Okay. Um, so like a lot less expensive than your, even when you find it on sale, maybe in the States somewhere, it's still less expensive than that. Even with um, shipping, whatever else I had to pay on top of it. Um, so I just think with UK auctions, no one's looking for Johnny Walker Blue when you, you know, have auction bottles available, right? Like those guys are all past that whiskey. So I got a good yeah. deal on it there. And then other than that, um, I didn't get the old, the old uh, platinum. I couldn't get a hold of, so I bought the new eighteen uh, that kind of replaced it. But other than that, it's pretty easy to get those bottles. They're everywhere. Perfect. Yeah, well, I'd say the blue here is what two fifty. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can find it on sale for one sixty nine mm -hmm. occasionally. Most time about two and a quarter. Okay. Wasn't there a point where, when early on, when weren't they even trying to push it for more than two fifty? Mm -hmm. But I'd seen him push oh, it during know. Christmas for more than that once. I was like, wow. Yeah, that's that's a lot for that whiskey. That whiskey's overpriced for sure. Um, the only way to buy it is to buy it on sale, in my opinion. Uh, it's three hundred dollars Canadian here in Ontario, which is completely ridiculous, but. Hmm. Yeah, UK auctions. If you ever uh, dabble in that and you want a Johnny Walker Blue, you can probably find a good deal on one because they go for pretty cheap there. But I'm trying to get, you know what I'm trying to get? The Johnny Walker Blue, the cask strength edition. I think it's a travel exclusive only. I've heard it's amazing. I think it's bottled at 55-ish percent. Um, trying to get my hands on that. That one is not cheap either. I think that is around, I want to say, two. 280 us dollars maybe 300 us dollars depends on where you are but uh, travel retail exclusive i think at this point yeah i think so i've, I've seen or heard that in uh, mentioned in the past i think you're right about that but really i mean that's not a bad price jump to go to a, a cask strength one to to see to try yeah and i've heard it's great i mean johnny walker blue you know my biggest one of my biggest complaints about it is this the 40 percent abv is just not helping it whatsoever even though you get some really good viscosity and good mouthfeel from that whiskey at 40% is kind of impressive uh, in that regard. But something like that, cast strength, where they have those old, you know, 40 year old grain whiskeys in there, some really old single malts as well. I think that's going to be a really nice bottle. And I'd love to do the comparison cast strength versus regular Johnny Blue. It's going to be good, good video for sure. Yeah. More cheese came in. Yep. Smoke Gouda. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, Lana Lou agreed. JW Blue is overpriced for what it is. There you go, Lana Lou. Good to see you commenting. Mm, it was cast strength, Johnny Walker, that woke me up. Santa Cruz. Yep. Mm. Good. We had a cast strength. All right. Mm -hmm. I have not. Yeah, I've seen a different thing. Yeah. Mm. Good. Mm -hmm. Uh, Bart, I got something that you might be interested in. I don't know if you guys are aware. I kind of do my own um, finishings. I'll mm -hmm. take like a, a one, li one liter barrel like this one here. I'll fill it with like port wine or like a sherry. Um, and then I finish this one. It's an Ardbeg 10 year old, which I finished in a cask I uh, seasoned with port. So it's a port finished Ardbeg 10. It is really, really good. I don't know if you saw the video. I did one more recently with a Lagavulin an eight-year-old. I sent a sample of it to uh, Eric Waite. Eric reviewed it. He gave it 90 points. Wow. Um, he was very impressed with that. That one is actually probably my best work I've done so far. Um, but this this Ardbeg 10-year-old, port finished, it is really, really good stuff. So I usually put the port in for about two months, let it soak into the wood as much as I can, dump that port out, throw in the Ardbeg. I think this one... I think it was only in there for four or five days. That's all it really needed, just a little bit of port influence. I mean, I don't know if you can see the color. Mm -hmm. Deep. Very nice dark. Picks up the color in, a, in, a, in like two or three days, um, but really good stuff. This one I got going right now. This is a Fino Sherry I got in here. I haven't decided what scotch I'm going to use yet. I think I'm going to go with either Springbank 10-year-old 
maybe uh, Port Charlotte 10. And also I was thinking about doing, uh, I have a Highland Park full throttle, which is uh, ex bourbon matured only. I try to use uh, scotches that are only ex bourbon matured, just so it's gonna cut that clean kind of canvas to pick up the wine influence a little bit better versus something that's already sherried or already finished. Mm. But uh, this is some good stuff. Really, really good stuff. What about uh, Magnus Highland Park Magnus? That'd be yeah. Uh, that'd be another yeah. That'd be another good one to do too. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I find the peat. I find the peated whiskey works well in them. Um, I did a a Balvini twelve single barrel, which is all ex bourbon. Didn't turn out quite as well. I think the peat. I don't know what it does, but it just it just meshes with that that port really really well. Now, did you use? I mean, are you using a cheap port, a cheap uh, you know sherry? Are you buying uh, better stuff to put in there? To yeah, I'm buying. It's like a, I would say middle of the road. Um, the port that I used was a Taylor Floodgate um, late bottle vintage, about fifteen dollars a bottle Canadian here. So was that like twelve bucks US? So not too expensive. Um, the Fino I did step up and bought a decent one. I forget the brand now. That was like a thirty dollar, twenty five dollar, thirty dollar bottle of Fino sherry. So you said it was about thirty dollars, not a boot thirty dollars. Is it boot? Yeah. yeah. You know. <laughs> you know, a lot of people a lot of people call me out for my Canadian accent on my videos, and obviously I don't notice it. Um Oh, well, you said it good. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't I don't think I say a boot. I mean you can really <laughs> say like a whole bunch of Canadian slang, but <laughs> Well, it's only like a certain region, isn't it? Isn't like the eastern? Yeah, yeah. Usually, or like northern or eastern, you get a little more that heavy Canadian hoser kind of accent. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Bob and Doug McKenzie. Yeah. I yeah. I mean, sometimes you know they slip out of me, but yeah. try to keep it. Try to keep it as best I can. I like the Saskatchewan accent. How's that? Very subtle. Oh. Yeah. Family, that's what it's all about. <laughs> What's uh, wh where's your preference lie with whiskeys, Jeremy? As far as types of whiskey, like Scotch, bourbon, Canadian, etc. Yeah. Uh, Scotch first and foremost for sure. Um, just the variety you get from Scotch whiskey, um, unmatched in my opinion. And then I go right to bourbon. Love bourbon. Um, I would say Scotch is more something I want to sit down with and analyze. Bourbon, if I'm watching sporting event or just, you know, hang on the couch, love a bourbon pour. And then after that, I would go world whiskeys, um, big Cavalan fan, um, Amroot's got some good stuff. And then pulling up the rear would be Canadian whiskey. Think about Canadian whiskey. I mean, until recently, most of it is just mixing whiskey, you know, 100% corn, a little bit of rye, maybe mixed in. And it wasn't really until Don Livermore, you guys obviously know, um, started putting out some decent stuff to kind of compete with that whole American BTAC kind of special release stuff. And obviously, you know, the Lot 40 cast strength is really good stuff. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, as far as Canadian whiskey, there's only really a couple that I've considered really good. Uh, most of it's just for mixing. But hopefully that's changing. Hopefully that's changing soon. Hopefully uh, distilleries will start to do that. But they make so much money with their mixing whiskeys. Um, there's not much motivation for them to do it other than, you know, the whiskey nerds like us would appreciate it, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. Well, you know, it's kind of like, you know, with bourbons, there's a, a general tasting profile that you have and some stand out above that. Some fall, you know, way down back behind that kind of the same with Canadian whiskeys. There's kind of the general Canadian whiskey profile that you find. Sure. And you got a few that distinguish themselves and, and, and move apart from that. Well, and then a few that, cast, right? Yeah, like definitely. Yeah. yeah. A lot of the JP Weiser stuff, you know, lot 40 stock and barrel. Mm -hmm. um, who else is Guterham? Is it Guterham and Warts? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Ralphie just did one of their, what the, he did the 11 grain or well, I can't remember which one he did now. Anyway, he was loving that that Gooderham and Wurtz. Thought mm. it was really good. He scored at a high mark too. I think he almost gave it what 80, 88, 89, 90, something like that. So it's good coming from Ralphie. That is that's a, that's a respectable score from him for sure. Yeah, but then the problem is you, they don't. Uh, most of those they don't they keep in Canada. They don't sell yeah. outside of you know to the states or anywhere for people to have. 
Yeah, the numbers on those releases are pretty small. Um, I'm not sure exactly. I mean, the lot 40s, they only produce about 4,500, 5,000 a year. So those get sucked up pretty quick. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. unfortunately, just the stock's not there. And this year, um, I sampled the new lot 40 cast strength. They, uh, they had to knock off the age statement, didn't have enough supply to keep it at, at uh, 11 or 10 years, or sorry, 11 or 12 years. Um, but they finished it in uh, French Oak, and it actually turned out really, really well. I think I like this new release better than I liked last year's, which was the 11-year. Still not as good as the 12, the year before that, but the French Oak that, uh, that Don used this year for that whiskey um, did wonders, and I think it's going to be really good. I think a lot of people are going to like it. Well, the and the the uh, lot forty cast strength twelve year we had uh, someone in Canada uh, named Daniel arranged sure. for us to get that. Mm -hmm. uh, the eleven year we've never seen, yeah. and so yeah, now they're already putting out a you know a non age statement one. But yeah, did you ever get to try that the eleven year? Eleven year old I was really like mm. the twelve year old was better, but yeah, I like them both. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll see. That's that's gonna come out this fall, um, along with some other ones too. Um, you know, the uh, Wiser's thirty-five and those other like eleven grains, the Gooder Hams, all that stuff coming out this year. So yeah, let's do. Yeah. Uh, we're already at four thirty-one. Let's do our mm -hmm. giveaway. Yeah. Swami and, says he has zero accent. By the way, Swami has zero <laughs> zero accent. Um, he said American accent. <laughs> 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 let's do the giveaway uh and then jeremy's got some new coins and stuff he wants to talk about maybe he wants to do a giveaway i don't know mm -hmm. yeah i would love to do a giveaway um these coins just got like fresh off the press um i just opened up i don't know you get a good look at that i don't know if it's gonna focus there's hey, the bart, front hold on bart was crunching the mic switched over here to us and the chips okay all right so got an order is <laughs> Here's the coin. Uh, like I said, fresh off the press, brand new. There's the front, the back, uh, around the sides. It just says uh, my slogan, let's go palette, which I say every review. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, if you want to check those out, uh, my website, supersocialclub.com. Got hats, shirts, coins, glasses. Um, everything's up there and uh, ready to go. So, check that out. All right. Let's do, uh, we've got a 763 that I've got here, which is Cask 5, our brand new coins, fresh off of the press. They're up on the website. Cask 5 has a red front, and then what we call our stamp of approval on the back, makes you a certified Scotch God. The dummy stamp. I've got 763, which will go to a patron. And we are at 174. We picked up a new patron. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hey, Siri, generate a random number between 1 and 174. A random number between 1 and 174 is 86. 86. Boom, we're out Let's of the see. triple digits. 86. 86 is somebody uh -oh. that's been declined. Ooh, they've been declined. So, we so we're, we're going to redo it, but we will reference. We've got some folks that decline happens. Usually it's a card date expires or something. So check your stuff if you're a Patreon supporter. Make sure you go in and just make sure you're up to date. Yep. Usually it's just a, a card that, that goes... Uh, extinct well hey, again hey siri generate a random number between one and 174. a random number between one and 174 is 102. Ooh, matt zittrick what uh, matt he he's, got he's coin number 763. he's gonna love that <laughs> sunday evening scotch now, have put out decline we need a quiz a trivia question jeremy from the show something we've talked about ask everybody and the first to answer it wins coin 764 oh, yeah uh sorry 764 sorry i was reading daniel willis says he fixed his decline <laughs> um okay so you want me to come up with a trivia question for your viewers to win the coin yeah Yep. Right. So something from the show that you've talked about or mentioned that you think would be, uh, I don't know, maybe hard for them to figure out. Okay. All right. Um, what I'll do is, obviously, you're going to pick the first person to respond for the winner. That's right in the comments. All right. For the second person to respond, so the runner-up, I'll throw in one of my coins. And how about I pour uh, like a one-ounce sample of the Ardbeg uh, Dark Cove Committee release? A lot of people like that. Oh. Ooh. So I'll do a coin and a, a one-ounce sample for the second place uh, runner-up. 
Um, all right, the trivia question is, um, all right, let's go. Uh, what was the bottle of Scott uh, of scotch that Scott dropped in his driveway? Oh, I know. Wow, that's that's <laughs> going way back in our history. You gotta be, you gotta be, uh, you gotta be exact too. You gotta be exact. Which one was it? I, I almost thought it out loud there. <laughs> George Kaplan knows. Ooh, oh, there it is. Nishida uh, caps it. Exact. Yeah, Nishida got gotta it be exact. exact. Gotta be exact. What? You don't like what Nishida said? Which batch? Oh, okay. Yeah, he could be more. Come on. <laughs> now you're going to have to call different. this one because now they're all over. There it is right there. Steven Davidson. There are people are going to call foul on that one. Balvin Eton, 1509, batch three. All right. No, uh, he's Jeremy said you had to be exact. Yeah, you got to be exact. You got to give me the batch yep. number two. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Ebhead is not pleased. <laughs> There's a word that starts with F in there. <laughs> uh, okay, well, who is the runner-up? Uh, huh. Let's see, Stephen David. Let me make sure I got Stephen Davidson down first. As he's got it's Balvin Eton, 1509, batch three. We had some people getting close. And the second a one. Typo. What's that? No, batch two. Uh, Jesse Voison is second. Okay, Jesse, um, email me at super social club at gmail.com and I will send uh, a coin and a sample of some art bag out to you. Oh, I like that. Multi Ulti was close, very almost there. Yep, $350 got out of my Tahoe, dropped that sucker right in the driveway. But what did you not drop? Uh, Linkwood Gordon McPhail, Linkwood 15. 78 dollars. I said, as I felt it going, I said, please be the Linkwood. <laughs> it was not. That's yeah, right. that's that's got to be uh, you know tragic. I would. Uh, that's a nice bottle too. Did you, you guys? The, you got a replacement run though, right? Yeah, I did. You scout right over here. Help me find it, and I replaced it for him. Surprised him. That's a great. That's a great bottle. That's one of my favorite Belvinis for sure. Uh, Steven, or I think it's Steven, it's it could be a Stephen, S-T-E-P-H-E-N. Send us an email, scotchtestdummies um, at gmail.com, and uh, we'll get your address from you and get you coin 764. Mm -hmm. Right there, I'm grabbing it before Bart loses it. All right, thank you. <laughs> I tend to lose stuff when it's right in front of me like that, just sitting on a table, I'm not even touching it. Yeah, we still got five or six minutes left, so it's timed up good. Well, talk, tell us about yourself. That's right. <laughs> how, yeah. How did you get into whiskey? What got you to this point, Jeremy? Um, that's a great question. Um, real quick, Tom R in the chat is asking about these glasses. These are Stoltzel nosing glasses. These are my favorite glasses. And yeah, they are low gold. They are available on my website, supersocialglove.com, if you want to check them out. Um, I love these things for cast strength whiskey. Just because the surface area around the bulb is so much bigger than a Glencairn. You can really like let that whiskey breathe. It works well, I um, really do like these glasses a lot. As far as me getting into whiskey in general, um, my dad was always a Canadian whiskey guy. He drank um, Crown Royal most of the time, uh, mixed it with Coke. So I kind of got into whiskey, I guess, that way. Um, didn't seriously start drinking, sipping whiskey. I think the first real like kaboom where I kind of got hooked was Knob Creek, as far as bourbon was concerned. Had Knob Creek for the first time and loved it. Um, Scotch-wise, it was maybe a Macallan 12 sherry. Um, that whiskey was just great. And it kind of just got bit by the bug at that point and then just exploded. Started a whiskey club with my friends uh, from university. Was that maybe like seven years ago or so? Um, and when I moved to Toronto, I've been in Toronto for about three and a half years or so. I uh, got hooked up with Toronto Whiskey Society and uh, all those guys in there. And then, um, you know, my my access to bottles and to swapping samples with those guys. Those guys have some great, great stuff. And it just kind of escalated from that point on. And uh, here we are today, I guess. I mean... It's an expensive hobby, uh, hobby, uh, hobby, and I love every minute of it. Perfect. 
Worked, uh, Matthew Parks wants to know what we had for lunch. Everything, basically. Yeah, boom. Are we ordering pizza, too, at some point? I think we're going to have to at Good. some point, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll right. get in. So maybe at the <laughs> We've break. been eating cheese. You had some cream cheese kind of stuff, yep, rolls. Yep, there's still a few um, of those We started the there. day off with a big baked cinnamon roll. Yeah, a lot that of was carbs. a good way to start. Yep. Good one. All the chips and salsa. Yep. Chips and salsa. Chips and I haven't had any salsa. salsa. I didn't want the onion and the, the spice. Really? Yeah. I'm really well with the drum. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. True. Could be. It was good. Um, I got something to show you guys. You guys were over in Scotland. Were you there during the, how do you say, the Fazil Festival? Fazil, the Fazil, right as before, we call it. Right before, yeah, the Island Festival. We were there about a week prior. A week prior. Um, a viewer of mine was super, super generous. He gave me this. This is Octomore's release from the Fazil Festival. It is called Event Horizon. It is the oldest Octomore ever bottled, 12 years old. Um, I think they only released 2,000. They were for sale at the distillery only, 162.6 uh, ppm. This is matured in um, Oloroso Sherry, I believe. Wow. So super generous, um, Richard's his name. He sent this uh, courtesy uh, to be reviewed on the show. So. I mean, what a great guy and what an awesome whiskey. I mean, I remember I was looking at this. I remember I mentioned it one of my lives. I was like, oh, Brooke Lottie's releasing an Octomore for the uh, for the festival. I'm like, I'm never going to get that, you know, 22,000 bottles. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Boom. awesome yeah. stuff. Excellent. Well, let everybody know. That would have know. to be a 12-year-old in a sherry cask would have to be, have cheap. To be good. Cheap is what you were going to say. It had to be inexpensive. Mm, I got it. <laughs> well, tell us where uh, everybody can find you. Plug your page. Anything else you want? Yeah, um, YouTube. It's a uh, super social club. Um, check out some reviews. I got some cool stuff coming up. My next video is going to be my top five recommendations for the intermediate Scotch drinker. So once you've gone through those basic beginner scotches, you know what to look out for if you want to step up to the next level. That video is coming out very soon. Um, I just launched my website, SipperSocialClub.com. If you want a coin, uh, a shirt, a hat, uh, one of these awesome glasses, check it out. You can buy it right online. Um, you can pay with PayPal or credit card. So, yeah, check that out there. Very Perfect. nice. Cool. Yeah. All right. We're good. Any other comments coming in? And then we can... Are you ready? Yeah, we're just a minute off, so I think we're good. All right. Jeremy, thank you yes. for joining us. No, thank you, guys. I really appreciate you having me on. Awesome Our stuff. Pleasure. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Scotch it, you Scotch gods. Cilantro. Dummies. Dummies. Cheers. All right. Hang on for a second here. Ooh.